Hey what's up YouTube and welcome to part 2 of my IKEA tutorial. If you haven't followed part 1 along then you won't be able to use this tutorial as well you probably won't have an IKEA. If you haven't made part 1, completed part 1, then check out the description below, the top of the comment section and I'll even show you what the video looks like on the screen right now. Once you have followed part 1 along you can continue on with this tutorial and we can both make and finish our entire IKEA. With all of that out of the way we can start building. So the first thing we want to do is work our way to the entrance of our IKEA. There are many, many materials used throughout this tutorial. I have split every single material we need to use into each one of the different rooms slash subsections of rooms. So I'll give you a fair warning before we begin building any part of this tutorial what you're going to need. For instance, here are all of the materials that you will need to make the lobby. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So the lobby. Really simple. In this back right corner we're going to place a couple of terracottas stacked next to each other with two rows of oak leaves on top. We'll leave a gap of one and then place another terracotta, flower pot on top and then we are going to put something in the flower pot. I'm choosing an azalea. Next to this we want to make some trolleys. These are really simple. So cauldrons stacked in front of slash behind each other with a separating barrier of iron bars and then some more cauldrons, preferably stacked in a different number, will give us shopping carts slash trolleys. We have to open up the actual entrance into our IKEA, so this is directly next to this potted plant here and as we go along we are also going to be replacing the floor. So with that complete we are going to move through here and we aren't going to be starting on the showroom ju just yet. We are going to be moving up a little bit and we have to break into the cafe area. You're just going to have to start taking out some of this wall until you find the yellow wall. This is the starting position for the cafe. And here are all of the materials that we will use throughout this part of the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So with that being said we are going to come all the way over to the end of the cafe. In the corner we're going to stack a couple of furnaces next to each other, a detector rail on one and an item frame on the other. Above this we want to have a couple of andensite stairs and then next to this we are going to stack some light grey concrete extending towards the front of our build. We're going to place a brewing stand on here, flower parts, perhaps more item frames, perhaps not. We're going to create a shelf using some spruce trap door, lantern on one part of the shelf, flower pot on the other. In front of all of this we want to stack some more actual counter space. So we need blue concrete for this. We're going to extend from this split here where we have the blue concrete, we'll place a blue concrete leave a gap and then a row of four blue concrete extending to, to this wall. We're going to get rid of all of this and we're going to grab our smooth quartz stairs, our item frames, we'll need spruce buttons, we'll need some heavy weighted pressure plate, a bit of glass, the blue concrete again, paintings, end rods, yellow carpet and we'll need a couple more things too. So on top of this counter, keeping everything very simple by the way, heavy weighted pressure plate, spruce quartz stairs, couple of item frames, we're going to uh, place some spruce buttons in here. Now these look like li little meatballs. If you've ever been to Ikea you'll know exactly why we're placing those. And of course you can always stack them in these as well and we could even make bigger ones. You can of course use different materials. That's a huge meatball. That's like the size of my fist <laughs> but we can place that. You can uh, even choose to fill the uh, flower pots in with different plants. It's completely up to you if you want to start making improvements. In front of this we are going to have a row of free blue concrete like this. So we want to be able to walk around the outside of this space here and we want to place glass on top of this. So it's kind of just a divide for people that are like queuing and people that are actually getting served. So next we have the rest of the room to make 
And first of all, we are going to start placing some tables. So the first table is actually one row away from the little separation that we've made. It's placed against this wall, so we'll leave a gap of one, place two quartz stairs. End rods in front, quartz stairs, yellow carpet on top. We then want to place all the way at the end here the same thing. So two, uh, two quartz stairs, end rods in front, yellow carpet on top of the end rods, and then smooth quartz stairs. Then we're going to... We kind of just have to devise a way to have a table that's kind of like evenly split between this area. So it might be nice to place... If we leave a gap of one between the blue concrete here, we'll have a table or chairs and then end rods in front and then yellow carpet. And then if you kind of take a look, like this is all nice and evenly placed or spaced and placed actually. And against this wall here, we are also going to have some stairs with the end rod and carpet combination. So these are opposite the large table. We're just going to have a single table and we'll have the exact same thing a little bit further down. So we'll have the stair, end rod, carpet, and then stair again. And in the center of the room, so this is this kind of like splits the room up a little bit. So we'll probably place it here. We'll have a row of blue concrete here. Or maybe we'll even make it a double row of blue concrete. Probably not. We'll have a single row of blue concrete here that is just two rows away from the center split. We'll extend the blue concrete up and we'll join it front and back like this. So to the front of the build, to the back of the build. And it will just look like a supportive beam. And we're going to use andensite wall. And we're going to join that beam forwards and backwards like this. And it's just going to look as... It's it's kind of cool. It feels a little bit more industrial. Some Ikeas do. I've only been to a few of them. But I assume that they're relatively similar in design. Like, some of the inside of Ikea feels very, like, industrial and very almost factory and warehouse-ish. And I, I think that we kind of achieve that effect with this. So what we then want to do is maybe place some paintings on the wall. So a good place for a painting might be here. I'm thinking one of the 1x2s. That one will do just nicely. And maybe one over here as well. Maybe we'll go for a 1x1. One one. That one is just fine. That's looking pretty good. If you want to add any more decoration, I might recommend a bin. So a cauldron with a trap door on top all the way over at the end here, just next to the door, or maybe just behind here. I think that looks pretty good. And I think that that is a nice, successful cafe. So we're now going to work our way back in the showroom, and now we are going to complete the entire showroom. So with those two rooms kind of a thing by themselves, we are now going to work through every single one of the rooms, and I believe that there's 12 of them. So the first one is here, and here are all of the materials that we will need to complete this particular room. So grab all of these, and once you have them, we can begin. So in the corner of this room, we're going to place a sideways facing smooth quartz stair. Extend it across by one, and then place another sideways smooth quartz stair on the end. Couple of end rods on top of each other next to the sofa, light grey glazed terracotta on top, and then place iron trap doors above this so that we can form a shelf. We want two of them with a lantern, flower pot, oak sapling, just like this. That's looking pretty good. In front of the sofa, we're going to leave a gap of one and place a row of three smooth quartz slabs. Then we're going to leave a gap of one between this, and we are going to dig out two rows of three place light grey concrete in this, and then we are going to need black concrete, painting, dead fire coral fan, but any dead fan will do. We're going to place this on top of the light grey concrete. On the wall above this, leaving a gap of one from the floor, we want a 2x3 layer of black concrete. And then if you like, we can even place like a little painting here. And this is just a really nice, simple, modern room. And depending upon whether you like this or not, this is kind of like up to you. You can destroy into the next room over here so we can cut through, as that's kind of like a thing at Ikea. Like, you don't necessarily have to snake around the entire area. Sometimes there's little cut throughs, sometimes there's little doorways, sometimes there's passages, and that is one of those. So, with that complete, 
we can move on to the next room. So we're literally just shuffling along here. The next room is a dining room. So here are all of the materials that you will need to complete this particular room. Make sure you have all of those. I'm gonna get rid of the chest and let's begin. So in the two corners of the room, we want to place a terracotta. Leave a gap of one, extending inwards and place another terracotta. In the corners of the room, we'll place dark oak fence on top of the terracotta with spruce leaves on top of the fence. On top of the two inward terracottas, we'll place flower pot, dark oak saplings, and we want to also have some paintings. We want a bunch of one by one paintings. These are placed in between all of the terracottas and they are placed two rows off the ground. So we just, that is an extraordinary coincidence. I almost want to go for, <laughs> there we go, nailed it. Why not? Why not go for the same painting, for painting three times over? That looks, it actually looks pretty good. So in front of this, leaving a gap of one in between the empty space of the two end terracottas, we want to place dark oak planks and join them together. Extend the dark oak planks one row forwards like this and place item frames on the back two corners of the table with flower pots in front. White carpet in between the item frames and the flower pots. And then we are going to grab white banners, birch stairs, birch door, birch sides. We're going to hang white banners off of the center of the table. And then behind the table, so the two corners, we're going to place birch stairs with birch doors like this behind the stairs. Then birch sides on the sides of the birch stairs. And this is just a nice, cool little dining room table setup, slash dining room. We're going to destroy into this next room. We're going to have a little archway. As I mentioned, like some of this is kind of like free flowing and sort of open plan. So this is going to be a bit more of a modernish dining room. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make the room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. Let's destroy that. So the first thing that we're going to make in this room is actually going to be a fireplace. The fireplace is going to be two netherrack stacked in the corner here, extending forwards with upside down smooth quartz stairs all the way around. We then want to place black stained glass paint on top of these stairs, light up the netherrack, and then we want to place smooth quartz slabs hovering half a row above the glass, and then fill the top of this in, and there we have a little fireplace. The next thing that we're going to do is mark out the table area. So the table is the same width of the archway and we leave a gap of two between it. So one, two, destroying the ground, a row of three, sea lanterns inside the empty space, glass on top, white carpet on top of that. And then we're going to place, I think that we're actually going to destroy in the ground left and right of this and place some light gray concrete. And then we're going to place smooth quartz stairs either side of the table on the ends to form chairs. The next thing that we're going to do is grab some light grey glazed terracotta, birch fence, azalea leaves, paintings, and in the corner here, light grey glazed terracotta, birch fence on top, azalea leaf, and then on this wall, we're going to simply just have another painting. I'm thinking maybe the white painting, that would be perfect. Nailed it, nice. And by the way, that is that room complete. However, I do want to point out that say like with this room as well, and even the living room, if at any point you kind of want to change the floor, if you want to kind of like make it a little bit more, if you want to customize it more than I have, then you should absolutely do so. Like I, I think I'll be doing it myself as we kind of like move through into different rooms, but like some of these rooms would benefit from a little bit of a material chop and change. And you can even change the backdrops as well if you like. You can change the color of the archways and you can really get creative with it. So if I've done something that you don't like specifically, do feel free to change it. However, we're going to now move on to the next side. So moving around the corner here and coming all the way onto the next set of rooms, the first room on this side as we move along is going to be a kitchen. So here are all of the materials that we will need for our modernish kitchen. Make sure you have all of those. So first of all, we will make some counter space. So in the corner here, we'll place a light gray concrete, extend it one, two, 
three rows forward. No, only two rows forward. And across the back, place a furnace, detector rail on top. Next to it, light grey concrete, cauldron, tripwire hook above it, light grey concrete. Then above all of this, we want to have a bunch of shulker boxes. This will look like cupboards. Um, on the counters, we'll stack like a lantern, a brewing stand, a flower pot, make it look nice and utilitarian. And then we need the block of iron, stone buttons, stone pressure plate, white concrete fern, and the flower pots again. And then we're going to make some counter space. So this counter space is going to give us an island, kind of like in the middle of our kitchen here. You can even extend everything one row forwards if you like, but I, there was something that I sort of liked about only having one row um, for the island. But, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you. Everything is mixable. So we're going to have a couple of stone pressure plates, flower pot, fern in there, and that looks absolutely perfect. In the corner, we're going to have a fridge, so that's a couple of blocks of iron on top of each other with stone buttons. And once again, I'm kind of opting to make a nice little archway so that we can kind of like flow into this room. And of course, something to point out once again is with this room being, say, you know, more modern, with it looking a little bit more, you know, with it looking more modern, with it having more modern vibe, you are more than welcome to change the floor to change the walls. It's, it's kind of difficult to change one wall without also heavily impacting another part of the build, so, you know, the floor is probably the way to go. And this is pretty cool, so, like, you could easily change the floor into something like this, which is perhaps a little bit more fitting. It gives it a bit more character. More than welcome to add paintings and such, but anyway, that I think that that does actually look better. So, with that complete, we can now move on to the next kitchen. So for this room, you are going to need all of these materials right here. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So this room is a little bit different in that in the corner here, we are going to have a pantry. So I want you to stack a couple of scaffolding on top of each other in the corner, one to the left of this, and then we want to place some brown glazed terracotta around the outside of it. And in front of this, we are going to place doors. So these are going to be two backwards placed spruce doors like this. And I'm considering making the entire rest of the wall brown glazed terracotta as well. The only reason that I might not want to do that is because in the empty space here at the bottom, going left of this pantry, we want an upside down spruce stair, cauldron, and then two more upside down stairs. Above the cauldron, a trip by hook, and along the top of this empty space, we want a bunch of barrels for cupboards. So, sink, cupboards, and then we are going to... Oh, we should place the granite. So, in front of this, we're going to have another island. It's going to be three rows wide, and it's going to start leaving a gap of one from this right upside down stair. So, three granite, and then we want to grab... Brick stairs, brewing stand, flower pot, some saplings, painting... And that should do, actually. So, on the counter, of course, brewing stand, flower pot. In every kitchen, you're almost certainly going to have, like, a coffee machine or a kettle and some and some mugs and some cups. I mean, it's pretty unavoidable. In front of the granite, I want to have a regular upside-down brick stair in front of the center and then sideways-facing upside-down stairs left and right. Going to stack a bunch of flower pots on top with all different saplings inside of the flower pots. And that's going to look pretty good. And if you do want to just add a lantern for some light, you could add one just in the corner here. If you wanted to add something in the pantry, say melon, pumpkin, other, then that that's completely up to you. But I think it's it fills it up a bit too much. But it's, it's completely up to you what you want to do. And if you are looking to kind of like, you know, mix things up a little bit more with the floor, then you might consider going for a sort of like checkered effect as well. But using just spruce planks for every other oak plank that you have. And, of course, that destroys the pantry door. But there we go. And that looks pretty good. You might even want to contrast it with a bit of dark oak. But that's up to you. And that is the second kitchen. Moving on to the last room in this block, and we can also see right to where we very first started as well. Here are all of the materials that you will need to make this room. And me as well, we will need to make this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So, this room is another living room. 
hence why I decided to connect both of them together. In the corner here, next to this door, I'm going to stack a row of 2x3 bookshelves on top of each other. Leaving a gap of 1 from this door, I'm going to place a waxed cut copper stairs with acacia signs left and right of it. Above this, a couple of acacia trap doors, flower pot stacked on one, Danny line inside, lantern on the other. Classic. Against this wall here, leaving a gap of one from the oak planks, we're going to stack two waxed cut copper stairs, acacia sign either side, and I am looking for a specific painting to be placed above the sofa, Simpson style. That is, would you believe that that is legitimately the one? Perfect. I think the colours really complement this room. We're getting lucky with paintings. I, I might have just jinxed myself. Next thing we're going to do is place a rug. So the rug kind of leaves a gap of one between the chair and the sofa. And it ends up being a two by three rectangle in the ground. Like this. Against this wall, we are going to need to make a TV. So the TV is spruce stairs, spruce trap door, black concrete, levers. So this is directly opposite the sofa, and it's two back-to-back -back spruce stairs, upside down ones, joined together. Black concrete on top, lever on top of the black concrete to make some rabbit ears. And we're just going to clad the side of the TV using spruce trap doors. We might have to get a bit inventive with our placement. There we go, that's perfect. And of course you can even place a painting on these if you want as well, but I'm leaving it kind of blank. And there we have like a bit more of an old fashioned living room. I don't know why I blanked on the word living room. Technically words, sir, there's two of them. But that is half of the showroom complete, or at least I should say the main showroom. So how we proceed from here is up to you. My personal preference is this. I would like to destroy a hole in this wall and connect IKEA together like this. So this hole in the wall allows us to freely flow around IKEA like a butterfly. However, if you wanted to, you could keep that sealed up and you would have to literally explore the entire of your IKEA to get around it. I am I I'm having it my way. So <laughs> we're going to have a hole in this wall here, then we leave a gap of one, and then we destroy another hole in this wall so that we're able to just kind of like move around as we wish. And in destroying a hole into this wall, this brings us onto the first room of the second half of the main showroom. So here are all of the materials that we will use throughout this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So. This room, if you haven't guessed already, is a bathroom. In the corner here, the back life corner, we're going to leave a gap of one from the floor and place a lever. Above this, we are going to place an end rod pointed down. Underneath this, we should have... <laughs> unfortunately, we don't have it. We should have an iron trap door. We're going to place this underneath. I can't... I can't re-record that, guys. I mean, I destroyed the chest and everything, so underneath the end rod, we are going to have an iron trap door. You're just going to have to grab one. Left of this, we want to place glass pane to the left of all of this, extending up the wall vertically, and then extending one row in front of itself, like so. Underneath the glass, we are going to replace it using some light grey concrete. On the wall here, we are going to place a white banner for a towel. So this is a shower, this is a towel. You can even multi-purpose the iron trapdoor, and you can also use it as a grate as well, or a drain. Next to the towel, I'm going to break in to the next room as well, and I'm just going to refloor that. Against the opposite wall here, we want some counter space, so I'm going to place a light grey concrete, gap of one, to light grey concrete. Then I'm going to place on this wall, I want to have a toilet in the center of the wall. We only have row three, so it's this middle block, an upside down smooth quartz stair. And we are going to need birch trap doors. We are going to need the item frames, stone button, the white banner. We will need also the light grey glazed terracotta, 
cauldron, tripwire hook, we'll also need the white shulker box, we'll also need white carpet. So on top of the smooth quartz stair, we're going to place a birch trap door. To the right of this, on the wall, an item frame. Behind the item frame, a stone button, and a white banner inside of the item frame, pointing downwards to look like a toilet roll holder. In front of all of this, we want to have a little rug in the floor. It's a 2x3 rug made out of light grey glazed terracotta. In between the light grey concrete, we want a cauldron with a tripwire hook above it. And we are going to place a lantern in the corner here. And we want a flower pot either side of the sink. Then we could even place like a white carpet on the counter as well. White carpet on top of the tripwire hook and then on top of itself. White shulker box to the left of this with a white carpet on top of it. So we have a medicine cabinet and we also have some shelves. And there we go, a nice simple room. Part of me wants to turn the floor into something else. So perhaps with some calcite or polished diorite or maybe even a grey block. It's, it's difficult to tell what to use. I'm thinking calcite. I might go with calcite just because it's a bit more of a different material. I'm going to refloor the floor with this. We can even make it fancy in some parts as well. So I'm going to place a sea lantern underneath the cauldron. And you might be wondering, like, TSMC, why do you keep changing everything? Like, what? We, you, you didn't have the materials in the chest. I'm only just deciding to do this now, guys. So I'm sorry that we don't have anything, but there we go. I think that that looks a little bit better in my opinion. And I'm thinking a little photo here and maybe a shelf above the toilet. So I know, I know, guys, I'm sorry. It's not in the item list, but you know what I'm like. So lantern here. And I mean, my, my favorite material, my favorite combination of decoration of all time has got to be a shelf with a lantern and then a flower pot next to it. I don't know why. It's absolutely fantastic. It just works every time in almost every single room and I want a little one by one painting here as well I think that that looks pretty good I mean the room might be a little bit too cramped now I mean we're kind of moving away from modern as we get more and more you know more and more fancy with it but I'm also thinking that we can make the towel better as well so I'm thinking the maybe we'll use a bit of grey concrete so the towel I'm thinking we've got a white banner here right now loom white banner in there grey dye stripes Nailed it. Perfect. That's a much better looking towel. And I think that we'll leave it at that before we get too crazy. So that is a nice modernish bathroom. Moving on down to the next room. Here are all of the materials that we will need for this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So this room is a bedroom. But first of all, we have to make a change to it. In the back right corner of the room we are going to stack three rows of blue concrete that extend up from the ground all the way up to the ceiling. We're going to destroy through the center of this room and apply the same effect onto the opposite side just like this. So the purpose of this is that we can then place an oak door on the ends of the room and we have kind of like a secret walkthrough so, so not only is this going to look like a closet but we'll also very sneakily be able to get to the opposite side of the of the room which I think is pretty cool so now that we've done that we are going to stack an armor stand in the corner next to the closet then two red wall and extend them forwards by two rows white carpet on top of the initial two red wall upside down stairs in the corner with an oak sign in front, and rod on top, white glazed terracotta on top of that. I want to make a little rug. This is one row away from the width of the closet area, and it's a two by three row of white glazed terracotta. This wall here I want to make a bit more interesting. So to do that, we are going to need the loom, glass, white banner, yellow dye. Two by two square, destroyed right in the center of this little bit of wall, Glass inside, loom on the ground, open it up, white banner in there, yellow dye, we're making some stripey curtains. These curtains are going to go either side of the glass, and that kind of concludes the room. I, unlike with this room right here, I really want this to be really, really simple, and I think that we've kind of achieved that effect. So, in doing that, 
We now want to move on down to the last room in this little block, and we're going to need all of these materials to make this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So, this room is a blue bedroom. In the back right corner here, we're going to stack two bookshelves next to each other. On top of the left one, a lantern. On top of the right one, a heavy weighted pressure plate. Above this, we want to stack a light blue bed, which will then allow us to place a painting behind the pressure plate. So, next to this, we then want to stack a vertical row of free light blue concrete and extend that one row forwards. Ladders in front of the second row, and then we have to stack a bed in front of the first bed. So, we're going to place something, a solid block to place the bed on, destroy underneath it, and then we want to place trapdoors flipped up in front of that bed. In front of this, we want to place a chair. So this is an oak stair placed kind of like wherever you want, really, as long as it's in front of this desk area. So this is a, a bunk bed, but with, I'm sure this has a specific name, a bunk bed with a desk underneath it. So computer, books, chair, bed, easy. In front of all of this, we want to have a rug. So we're going to need light grey glazed terracotta. We will need the light blue concrete again. Crafting table, flower pot, fern, black concrete, chest, armor stand, trip wire hook, and we'll need one more thing too. So we're going to have a little rug just in front of all of this. Two rows of three light grey glazed terracotta spanning the width of the bed area. An armor stand in front of the bed with a chest next to the armor stand, tripwire hook above the chest, and then on this wall here, underneath this window, we're going to have a crafting table, light blue concrete, flower pot, fern, and then on the wall, at the same height as the top of the bed, we want two black concrete, and last but not least, a painting in front of this. I'm specifically looking for the blue, there we go, the blue painting, perfect. And... There we go, that is the room complete, ladies and gentlemen. So a nice blue bedroom, quite happy with that. So it's now time for us to move around onto the final row of our main showroom, and we are going to make an office. And it's actually going to have two displays in here. So here are all of the materials that you will need to make the office. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So. This office displays two desks. On the left, a modern desk. So we want to place an upside down smooth quartz stair in the center of this wall with two sideways facing stair left and right of this. We want a stone pressure plate on top of the center stair. Right of this, a stone button. Above all of this, we want to stack three one by ones. That is absolutely perfect. And there was a nice little lag, so that's quite satisfying to watch. So there we have a computer desk, computer monitors, mouse, keyboard, fantastic. Stair as a chair in front of this, and then we are going to destroy in front of the desk and around the chair, and we are going to have a checkered... That is not what I want at all. We are going to have a checkered rug that this all sits on. I would prefer it to be more white than light grey, so I'm just going to change it. There we go, that looks a little bit better. It's a bit more balanced now. Perfect. So, next, we are going to move on to this wall over here, and we are going to have... This time, it's a little bit different, so we want an upside down... A row of three, upside down... Black... Black... A row of three, upside down, dark oak stairs just in the center of the wall. Dark oak trap doors flipped up either side to make the desk itself. And then on the center, or rather the left side of the desk, we want the stone pressure plate. On the right side of the desk, we are going to have a stone button. One row away from the center of the desk, we are going to have the chair, so that's just pushed out a little bit, just to make it a bit different from the other side. We want to have a bunch of monitors as well, so we're going to have a bunch of one by ones. It's, you know what, I would prefer if they all had something different on the screen, so that's perfect. Then we are going to grab the dark oak sign, 
uh, green wall, brown wall, uh, dark oak trap door. We'll also need the iron trap door, which we don't have. We we are not doing very well with the iron trap doors today. We also need the flower pot, dandelion, oxide daisy, lanterns, and we'll also need a couple more things as well. So the dark oak signs go in front of the left and right upside down dark oak stairs. That looks pretty good to me. The wall behind, along the top of the monitors, we want to place uh, a row of two shelving with flower pot on the left shelf with a flower inside. I'm using a dandelion for the uh, the more classic side with a lantern next to it. And on the more modern side, we're going to have a couple of iron trap doors. Once again, with the flower pot, this time with an oxide daisy in it and then a lantern. Perfect. So I'm going to destroy a roundy chair as well. And I'm going to have a mixture, a checkered pattern of green wool and brown wool for the more classic side. And then in between the two, kind of just to split the room in half a tad, we're going to have a terracotta with a couple of oak leaves on top. And there we have kind of like a more modern computer desk setup and a more classic looking setup. I really like this room. I think it's pretty cool to have like the contrast of both sides. Moving on to the next room. Here are all of the materials that you will need to complete this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. As a matter of fact, two of these are redundant now, which is the oak door and the blue concrete, which we'll still take, but still. So, this room, first of all, we have to dig a row of two in the back right corner of the room. So we're going to dig down two by two, or one by two. You guys get the idea. And we're going to place sea lanterns in the base of this. Pink banners on top, with quartz stairs in front of this. Then, pink, uh, we want to place a pink bed in front of each of the quartz stairs, and then we have a bed with some cushions slash pillows at the top of the bed. Above this, we're going to place a shelf, so this is two birch trap doors, and you guys have seen this decoration a million times now, you guys know it's my favourite thing to do ever. Uh, on top of the shelf, a lantern, flower pot, and we're placing a pink tulip inside of the the flower pot. Next to this we want a little dressing table, so scaffolding, pink carpet, quartz stair. We'll also need to make a banner, so a loom, white banner, black dye. So in the corner here we want to place a scaffolding, pink carpet on top, and then quartz stairs in front of the scaffolding. And then we're going to throw a loom down on the ground, open it up, place a white banner in there, and this is the simplest mirror that you've ever seen in your life. We're going to make a black frame around the white banner and hang that above the dressing table. So simple, yet kind of effective, honestly. Next, we are going to grab the bookshelves. We'll also need pink glazed terracotta, flowering azalea, flower pots, oak slabs. We also need, by the way, we need water, which is, I, I'm sorry that I forgot that, but you know, it's too late now. So we need water and brain coral fans. So next to this little secret entrance into this room, we are going to place a two by three stack of bookshelves here. Leave a gap of one pink glazed terracotta, flower pot on top, flowering azalea in there. At the end of the bed, we want to destroy a two by two square and then a one row to the left of this. Fill this in with water and then fill the top, just the top in, using oak slabs, and then brain coral fan on top of the water. And here we have a nice finished pink bedroom. By the way, I think I might even like this more than the blue bedroom. It's kind of a toss up. I like them both for different reasons. So last but not least for the main showroom is going to be another bathroom. Once again, hence why I kind of like connected these together. So here are all of the materials that we will need for this particular bathroom. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So first things first in this room is going to be a bath. So in the corner here we're going to leave a gap of one and have an upside down prismarine stair, specifically dark prismarine stair. Extend forwards by two, one, two, and then connect to the wall. On the wall here at the back where we would have a tap we're going to place a trip wire hook and stack flower pots on the end of the bath. We then want to have a painting above the bath, so this is a 1x2 painting just above this, and yeah, that one's actually quite nice. I'm, I'm quite happy with that one, that one will do. And then at the end of the bath, I want to have an end rod like this, with stacked sideways on the side of the wall to look like a towel rack, and then a banner hanging off of it. It, it looks like a towel rack, it's kind of perfect. Then. 
I think it's time for us to make... Actually, in front of this, I think that we're going to make a little rug, first of all, slash sort of like bath mat. I think more so of a bath mat as something that we would like dry our feet on, but kind of like, I don't know what else to call this. It's kind of like a rug, I suppose, if nothing else. Anyway, now that we've done this, we want to, on this wall, let's grab some different stuff. So, and we could also customize that banner to make it a bit more interesting. But anyway, we need to make a toilet. This is made using a cauldron and a spruce trap door, end rod, chain, item frame, white banner, stone button, and we might even stack some scaffolding in the corner. We also need a pot, by the way. So, one row away from the wall, we are going to place a cauldron, spruce trap door above it. Then, on the left side of this item frame, stone button behind, white banner in the item frame, facing downwards, and then we want to place a flower pot on the ground, either side of this, it doesn't really matter. And then we have to suspend a chain in the air with an end rod hanging down from it. And this is how one would fl flush an old fashioned toilet. And there should also be a cistern. I believe that that's the name for it. That sounds fancy. Um, a cistern, which would just be kind of like a white box, which would actually have all the water in it, kind of like above this. and. That is, it would be connected via pipework to the toilet, possibly through the wall, and that is how one would flush the toilet. Anyway, I don't know why... I, what, am I a plumber now? Do I have a plumber's hat on? I don't know. I'm not even sure if that's correct. But next to this, we are going to place uh, some... We'll need the dark prismarine. Upside down dark prismarine. <laughs> upside down dark prismarine stairs. <laughs> Specific... <laughs> We have to make it upside down ourselves. It's not an item that you can just get. And we need the light blue carpet, leather. Um, we'll also use some cyan shulker boxes. Uh, we probably will find some room for the scaffolding. And let's take a little look. So um, we're going to place a... Yeah, we'll place a dark prismarine block with an upside down dark prismarine stair next to it. On top of the stair, we want to place a blue carpet to represent water, or, well, yeah, light blue carpet to represent water, and next to it, a lever to kind of, like, represent a tap. Above this, a couple of shulker boxes, so this is just a bit of storage in the bathroom. And then, I'm thinking, on this back wall, I'm thinking maybe we place just a couple of scaffolding, and then underneath where we have the chain, we will have the pot. But we could retain its original position, and we, we could just have it be a bit crowded. I'm actually okay with that completely. I, th I think it looks pretty good. Um, you can stack carpets on top of this if you like. Uh, if you want to match them to, or roughly match them to the color of the room, so maybe like a green carpet and a cyan carpet to make it look like towels or some sort of other storage, I think that that looks pretty good. And I'm not too compelled to change the floor, although I'm thinking maybe spruce or dark oak might look a little bit better. Again, kind of going with the checker pattern, only because the checker pattern is kind of like the easiest and quickest way to make like a drastic change to the... Well, that was probably a mistake, but actually that looks like, that looks almost better. I kind of like that. So there we go, kind of like changed the floor a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last room, the second bathroom in our main showroom. What's next? This feels very significant. Welcome to the second half of IKEA. So the first thing that we are making here is going to be the plant section. So we have a bunch of stuff to make. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout this particular part. Please do make sure that you, ha you have access to all of these. So here, we are going to first of all divide the room into. We want to place terracotta right in the center of the room Extending from the back, we want to place two terracotta, gap of one, two terracotta, gap of one, two terracotta. Then in the back two corners, we want to place spruce planks in rows of three. So one, two, three, gap of two, one, two, and then one, two, three. So one, two, three, gap of two, one, two, three, like this. We're going to place spruce trap doors around the spruce planks. So that's why we've left a gap of two as well, so that we can successfully do this around the entire plank and this little end plank here which kind of like supersedes this wall we also want to place a spruce tramp door off of it too perfect so we want to stack flower parts on every single one of these spruce planks so flower plot flower parts on every single one of the planks 
The leaves are for the terracotta, so it doesn't really matter which order you do this in, but just choose three sets of leaves and place them on top of the terracottas. For the flower parts, I'm kind of arranging them a little bit, so I want a bunch of saplings together, I want a bunch of mushrooms together, a bunch of flowers together, and then a bunch of different stuff together. So again, it doesn't really matter where, where you place these exactly, but I'm bunching them together. A bunch of saplings, a bunch of flowers, a bunch of mushrooms, and then a bunch of what I would refer to as kind of like miscellaneous, really. So we're going to place these here. I'm keeping the floor the same. If you wanted to, if you just couldn't get enough of the plant parts, then you could install some shelves, and you could, of course, have another set of parts on the shelves moving up. Because, of course, Minecraft has so many different plants, so, like, you could have it, like, you know, how we had it, or you could add a bunch more plants. I would tend to add more plants if it was me. And of course, like there's so many of them, like it, it really doesn't matter if you're not too creative with this either. Like you can just stick a bunch of tulips together. You can stick a bunch of saplings together. Like there's more than enough. So like a bunch of tulips, a bunch of saplings stacked here. And then what else wouldn't look nice? I mean, there's so many flowers. We have a row of two here. So that'd be good for like the crimson roots and the warped roots favorite things in Minecraft by the way and then maybe we could have some of the more niche things I really like the cornflowers lily of the valley and what else gets stuffed into a flower pot I don't think you can put pickles in there maybe some alliums kind of stick with the kind of like bluey purpley family that looks really good so that's perfect if you wanted to make this look a tad a bit fancier we could also so unfortunately like we can't really suspend this from anything unless we you know chose to make this suspend from something like you could extend the end of this wall up and you could add a wall so like you could grab yourself some andensite so if you extended the blue concrete up and then placed some andensite wall spanning by the way we're in we're in new territory here so leaving a gap of one from the top of this actually so it doesn't connect to the glass we can spread the wall across the entire belt. What am I doing? So we can spread this through so it kind of get that sort of like good feel like this. That's pretty cool. And if we wanted to, we could just like spread one across here and here. And again, it kind of does make it look more industrial. It kind of makes it more fun, honestly, adding the kind of like support up here. And then we would be able to hang chains off of this wall. And I would want the chains to hang so that I could place lanterns kind of like here and here and part of me really wants to have paintings is that cool or not I don't know I think that that that, that looks really cool I think that that's a bit of an improvement from what we had and of course I have went completely off script but I think that that looks really cool and then I don't feel bad about it anyway Moving on down, oh, we didn't have to go far. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So, this room, which I think we will keep as original, he says. In this room, we are going to stack just a bunch of like different furniture and stuff, kind of like a little weird mishmash, a smorgasbord, if you like, of stuff that you may have seen and may not have seen already throughout our, uh, our IKEA. So in the back right hand corner here, we're going to leave a gap of one and stack two end rods on top of each other with a glazed terracotta on top. That is a lamp. In front of this, leaving a gap of one, we want to place a spruce plank, end rod on top, different colour terracotta. There we have a secondary lamp, floor lamp, table lamp. Leave a gap of one. We're going for something a bit different here. Crimson fence, iron bar on top, lantern on top of that, crimson sign, all the way around the lantern. There we have cool lamp. So kind of like a bit old fashioned with the iron bars and the lantern. So we have a bunch of lighting. Then on the opposite wall, we're going to have some seats. So armchairs, actually, yeah, that's it. It's actually just armchairs. So smooth redstone, Oh, sorry, smooth red sandstone, smooth red sandstone stairs. Got to say that. <laughs> Got to make sure that I get that out. Um, dark oak fence, warp stairs, warp signs. 
So in the opposite corner, this back left corner here, we're going to stack a two by two square of uh, smooth sand. We'll just call it that, some red sand. Then in front of this, we'll place two sideways facing smooth red sandstone stairs. Then we'll leave a gap of one, place two dark oak fence against this wall, extend them forwards and also up as well. We have another chair. Then we want to, leaving a gap of one, place a warped stair and then warped signs either side of the warped stair. So we have a bunch of lamps or lights and we have a bunch of chairs. This back wall is where things are going to get a tad bit more complicated. We're going to have a wall unit. So the wall unit is made using spruce stairs, spruce sides, spruce trapdoor, barrels, paintings, lantern, flower pot, lily, or any flower will do actually. So right in the middle of the wall, we want to place a barrel facing outwards and three more on top, one, two, three. Place spruce trapdoors extending from the top of the barrel on the left and right side. Then all the way down at the bottom, upside down spruce stairs, spruce sides in front of the stairs. Then we want to place a flower pot with a flower on top of the left stair and a lantern on top of the right, or vice versa. Then on the wall, we are going to place spruce trap doors. And then if we can anywhere else, it would have also been cool to place more spruce trap doors, but it's a shame that we can't. Oh, well, I guess you could if it, you, you can kind of like choose where you want to place these, but you can only place one more set. So I would opt for directly above the decoration. And then we're going to place flipped up spruce trap doors up the side here. And we want to do the exact th same thing on this side, moving up. Then we're going to place paintings behind the lantern and behind the flower pot. And that is a pretty cool wall unit, if I do say so myself. So it might even be cool to have glass in this. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not changing it. So the... <laughs> The next thing that we're going to do is make a table. This is such a simple table, it's so boring really. Um, we're going to use spruce trap door, oak trap door, or maybe birch trap doors we'll use in an oak trap door. So we want to leave a gap of two in front of this and then we want to flip up some birch trap doors. Or actually, let's have something really modern. Let's go for this. We've got sea lanterns, glass and white carpet. So same width as the wall unit. In the same plane as the spruce plank that we have here in the ground, we'll have the sea lanterns, glass on top, white carpet on top of that. So that's the same table that we actually made earlier. Then we're going to grab just red wool, and we already have the uh, white carpet. We want to leave a gap of one between this, and then we want a two by three uh, row of red wool with white carpet on the end to look like pillows. So kind of as a throwback, we have a table, we have a bed, we have a bunch of lights that we've used. We've not used any of those chairs, but it's kind of like a nice little mishmash of furniture. And I think it's pretty cool like this. And I probably wouldn't change any of this. Um, the only thing that you may want to do is kind of like change the floor. And if we kind of stick to the same sort of like, oh, kind of we just have the checkered floor again. Yes, we have the checkered floor again. I love it. So every other block, I'm just going to make dark oak dark oak plank and because of my texture pack it doesn't well okay because of my texture pack it looks a little bit weird but depending upon your texture pack it might also look weird with your texture pack but probably not or at least not this weird like the blocks kind of like want to join together in a weird way that's there we go that's better so here and then here 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 i don't know why this is confusing me there we go here so that looks pretty good. It looks weird here, but you know, it, it, it looks pretty interesting if nothing else. I kind of like the diagonal rows. But anyway, that is this room pretty much complete. I don't think that we're going to add any more to it. We'll leave it like that. We could add a bunch of shelves above here, but then it's like, what am I going to put on them? Let's find something to put on some shelves. <laughs> I kind of help myself, honestly. So maybe we just use some dark oak trap doors. We'll just make a bunch of shelves. We can even make them different heights. I'm thinking like no blocks. And I'm thinking like just kind of like tables. Like different tables might look good. Kind of just just to look a little bit different. That's at the wrong height, isn't it? So so maybe like here. So no block. Contrast with the smithing table. Cartography table. Crafting table. 
makes it, it, it just kind of like makes it look a little bit more interesting, I think. So that's how we'll leave this little room. It's just a mishmash of nice little bits and pieces, different furniture and what have you. So in doing that, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to we've kind of like finished all of the different showrooms now. You know that this is a monumental moment when I hit F5. So we are now moving on to the warehouse. The warehouse is where we... <laughs> where? Where? Anyway, the warehouse is where we store all of our wares. Literally, that's not even a joke. So, these are all of the boxes with, to assemble all of the stuff that we have spread around our showroom. So, you kind of, you, you guys know how IKEA works. You note something down, you find it in here, you pay for it, you go home, you try your best to assemble it, give up, have another go at it, call a friend over, they help you assemble it after you have failed, they don't do it quite right, it falls apart, and then you go and buy another one and repeat the process, and enjoy some meatballs along the way. So, the warehouse. Here are all of the materials we need to make it. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So, first of all, lining up with the edge of the wall here, we want to leave a gap of three in the ground, so one, two, three, place a blue concrete. Leave a gap of four, one, two, three, four, place a blue concrete. We're going to extend the blue concrete all the way up to the top of the roof. Then we are going to, leaving a gap of one from the top, place and site wall, and we are going to connect all of the blue concrete together to the surrounding. So again, kind of like the industrial sort of warehouse fun design. Here we go. That shouldn't be there. Perfect. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. We have to make a bunch of shelves. So we're going to place spruce planks in between the end wall of our IKEA and the two rows of blue concrete that we've just made. So it's just a bunch of spruce planks like this. We want to stack some scaffolding left and right of the ends of the rows of blue concrete. So the scaffolding kind of wants to get stacked around quite messily like this. I'm realizing that we actually want to change the floor as well. The floor I want to be and in sight. So maybe, actually, maybe we'll just make the walkways and in sight like this, just to create a little bit of contrast. So maybe, yeah, okay, this is okay. So the part that we actually like walk on in between the aisles of all of our stuff that is going to be andensite. I almost destroyed that chest, that would have been a bad move. So we're going to place andensite here, inside of all of the empty space like that, that's absolutely perfect. And then we're going to use andensite wall to split all of these uh, these rows up as well. So we're going to place andensite wall, extending up from the ground all the way up the top of the shelves like this. We're also going to place light grey carpet on top of this as well. And I think that we'll even place it on top of the Anderson. No, we won't. We'll place light grey carpet on top of all of these spruce planks like this. And it kind of looks like they kind of just look like dividers. And then we kind of haphazardly would be the word that I would use. Want to place stone slabs kind of like on the sides of the um, spruce planks. And we kind of just want to stack stuff on top of these and on the ground as well. Kind of like this. And we can even place like no, we can't. There we go. Never mind. And we can kind of have like more shelves kind of like spread about the place with bar So we just, okay. So this is how, this is how this divides up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me bre break this down for you. These are shelves. These cor these wood correspond to particular items in Ikea. This isn't a real Ikea. We don't have to do that. So on these shelves, we're just going to stack shulker boxes, chests, barrels at different heights using stone slabs as shelves just to make sure that we can actually remember to actually place them in in such a way that we can actually place stuff on them like this it doesn't really matter how you do it make it a bit random it will look better anyway and it'll just look like a bunch of boxes and that's it you might even want to place the chests and the shulker boxes and the barrels and all of that stuff first if you do so please um it might look a little bit better that looks great. I'm quite happy with that. Let's play some more. There we go. Here, here. It kind of is important to get a mix, I think. So a barrel would look good there. That's looking great. And then last but not least on here as well, we're not placing any on this wall. So why not? A couple of barrels up here. No, shulker box. Chest, chest, chest. Double chest. Why not? Double chest. Chests for everybody. 
then here, and then stone slabs across here, 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 why not? Why not make it a bit weird? There we go, that's looking pretty good. So, there we go. That is the sort of like warehouse part complete. And I'm quite happy with that. I don't think I want to add any lights. I think I'm going to add torches. Torches are kind of like... Torches feel right here, like, I don't know why. Torches either side of kind of like the tops of these shelves feels very right. And in doing that, ladies and gentlemen, that, this is the warehouse. I'm very happy with that. I think that that looks great. I have said this way too many times throughout this video, but guys, this feels like a very big moment. This is the last room of our IKEA, and also a completely different style of room as well. So, this is going to be the checkout area. Here are all of the materials that you will need to complete this room. Me as well, I don't know why I keep saying you. We will need to complete this room. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. So, this room. Wonderful room. Love it. From the blue concrete here, we want to leave a gap of two. And then place a row of five light grey concrete. One, two, three, four, five. We then want to leave a gap of two between this light, con light grey concrete and then another row of light grey concrete, which is equal to yet two rows away from the initial one. We then want to do that one more time. Perfect. So, these rows of light grey concrete, they want to have chests extending to the right of the first light grey concretes extending towards this back wall. We then want to place oak stairs next to the chests with a row of black wool next to the stair behind the light grey concrete. We then want to place lanterns on the ends of the light grey concrete. We then want to place item frames, shulker boxes, barrels, chests, but maybe not chests because we already have chests, on top of the conveyor belt. We then want to place glass pane either side of the light grey concrete that is in front of the quartz stair. Extend the glass upwards and join it together above. This is where the cashier is. And, well, we want to do this on all of the others too. So, it's quite a lengthy process. So, now I feel a little bit awkward. I don't even know why. I shouldn't feel awkward at all. That's exactly what we've got to do. Then, we are going to crab, terracotta, oak leaves, a couple of stairs. In the corners of the ends of this room, we want to place two terracottas with two rows of leaves on top. Just like this. Then, the space in between the tills, maybe not, that actually doesn't, that actually doesn't work out at all. So what I think we will do is leave a gap of one, or maybe we'll do this, maybe we'll have just like a long seat, or maybe we'll have just like, nah, I don't want a curved seat actually. So maybe we'll have just like a two, two rows of two quartz stairs extending from the pot of plants. And there we go, that looks pretty good. I am considering also adding some more of this sort of deal to the ceiling. But my only issue is, I would heavily prefer if it stemmed from a blue concrete. But, I can't really do that. It could stem from a light grey concrete, say, in the middle here. We could, like, extend this light grey concrete up. And then we could end in sight wall the grey concrete like this. I don't know why I'm being so specific with this. But it feels like I should, and I don't even know why. That's looking pretty good. There we go. So... Yeah, that's looking great. I really like that. So that's perfect. So we kind of get that s the structural feel. And I think I'm adding another row of andensite wall around this as well. There we go. That's absolutely perfect. I'm thinking about adding paintings above the seats. I don't know why I want to plaster the entire of IKEA with paintings. And yet here we are. You know, it's not something that we can avoid. So painting, painting. That that will do, Donkey. That will do. All we've got to do is join back to Ikea as well, to the entrance. So that... Okay, not there. Guys, <laughs> no, not there. So we want to make a doorway that is equal to this doorway here. And do we want to add those stealing things? You know those, like, anti-stealing devices where, like, if you take something that's tagged or attempts to? I would <laughs> never do such a thing on purpose. Right, guys? If you attempt to, like, walk out with it, and you shouldn't, it's a big oops. So, those trap doors kind of, like, signify that, I think. That looks pretty good. And, um, would item frames with redstone block look better? 
What about repeaters on top of these blocks? Would that look insane? We can't even place those. That's fine. So maybe like here? That looks pretty good, actually, no? I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. I like that. That's that's great. Guys, we've actually completed IKEA. I've, I've just realized. That's that's kind of like IKEA. Can't completely complete. That's That's the whole thing. That seemed to take a while. I hope that you have managed to follow this tutorial along relatively easily. I know that some of these interior tutorials aren't the easiest ones, but here we go. I'm not the hero that you have, but I'm the hero you deserve. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. My brain's melted from too much building. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please like the video, click subscribe, click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you want to make anything else by me, please check out the City Builds playlist. That will be in the description below, the top of the comment section. Probably already auto playing as I'm speaking right now. You'll also find a link in the end screen of the video. I need to go and lay down, maybe in one of the beds that I've just made. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.